Good morning, Facebook family. How are each of you doing this morning for our Facebook Live? If you heard the music that was going on in the background, Destiny Child uh, singing, I'm a survivor. Well, guess what? That song is totally fitting for our guest today. I am so excited to have uh, my sister, uh, uh, sister, uh, sister Lindsay Levenstein. Don't y'all don't mess up and say Levenstein like I used to say. It's Levenstein. Listen, y'all. Uh, she is a lover of a Destiny Child because she's a native of Houston, Texas. She's straight out of Houston, Texas. She's a graduate of the University of North Texas, a proud graduate of the University of North Texas. And she's also a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority um, Incorporated. Not only is she a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, she's also a proud member of the Brentwood Baptist Church of Houston, Texas, where I was privileged to serve for many years. And she's not only a proud graduate of Texas and a proud member of Brentwood Baptist Church, but she's also the proud daughter of Mrs. Levenstein, who is nothing but full of joy and full of life. But you know, life changes. And within these past couple of years, Lindsay was struck with breast cancer and she went through various uh, trials and various different surgeries, but even going through surgery, she was still smiling, as you can see um, in these photos and encouraging to so many people. And she decided that regardless of what come her way, she wasn't gonna let anything steal her joy. She said, if my hair gotta go, I'm gonna put it in a style. Uh, she, she just kept working and God gave her strength with her mother by her side, friends by her side. And then God brought her through. She went back to the hospital to be a blessing uh, to the nurses and be a blessing to herself. And then she decided that I'm gonna be a blessing to so many others and she started the Survivor Foundation and she'll tell us more about that because she wanna tell every woman, regardless of what you were going through, you can come out with your hands up and you can be strong. So I want y'all to help me welcome to our Facebook Live, none other than Miss Lindsay Levenstein. How are you doing this morning? Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Reverend C. And Listen. to the Mount Ararat family. And to everyone else, we, we are just excited to, to um, have you with us this morning. I know you've been so busy and with interviews and magazines and everything else. And I'm just glad that you have accepted this this invitation. How you doing? I'm doing well, despite the enemy trying to attack me through allergies. Oh, all right, I'm love. doing well. I'm blessed and highly favored. Um, yes, happy you are. New day. You know, every day that you wake up is a blessing, and especially as a breast cancer survivor. So I am blessed and highly favored. That is good. That is good. Well, Lindsay, do us a favor. Take out a um a, a few moments and let the you know, let the let the people know, the viewers know. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I want to say I want to applaud you for the introduction you just shared. You gave a great uh, biographical, geographical, biogra biographical uh, introduction. So thank you for that. So uh, born and raised here in Houston, um, attended the University of North Texas. And after college, I started teaching high school. And there was still a tug and a pull inside of me to explore broadcast journalism. So I trans mm -hmm. transitioned from the classroom to the newsroom and I started working for Fox 26 as a producer. And then I transitioned to an on air role as a reporter. And that journey led me to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then I stepped out on faith and moved to New York City to work in the number one media market. And I landed in public relations. And then I hit the restart button on my TV career, worked in several uh, news newsrooms for cable news stations on air, hosting, anchoring, reporting, working as a correspondent. And then in 2019, um, that's when everything came to a screeching halt. That's when my life changed. 
Wow, 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 wow. Um, and it's interesting how you go 2019 and then uh, 2020 right behind it. And here you are today, strong and helping others. And that's, that's we're on the other side of battles. And that that's just amazing to even realize where you were, you know, People complain about 2020 and you like, listen, y'all, 2019 was was my year. Exactly. That was yeah, 2019. Um, I uh was I remember vividly the summer of 2019, leading up to the summer of 2019. Um, I was just simply taking a shower and I felt a lump in my right breast, and I knew that that was not normal. And that was my sign and my red flag to to take action. So I scheduled a well woman exam, and my OB/GYN at the time scheduled what was my very first mammogram. So imagine this: not only, wow. uh, you know, did I feel something abnormal in my body, but this is my very first mammogram. Okay, wow. and that that was that led to not only a mammogram, a 3D mammogram, a breast ultrasound, and a biopsy of that lump. And that biopsy determined um, that on July 11th, 2019, I got the call that that lump was uh, was cancerous. Wow! So I had to take immediate action, and I relocated back home to Houston so that I could be surrounded by my village of caretakers, mom, Ivy, as you mentioned in the introduction, my aunt, Angie, and sorority sisters, Brentwood family, et cetera, friends and family. And it, I, I boarded the train and it took off quickly. It was like when you, when you take the trip on the Accela mm -hmm. from New York to DC, it was faster than that. Uh, wow. because I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, which is the most aggressive form of breast cancer. We had to go into action quickly. So I underwent 15 rounds of chemotherapy, lost my hair. But you know what? Um, even through that, when I lost my hair, I still rocked wigs and I still kept it moving mm -hmm. because I wasn't going to let breast cancer take over me. Rather, I approached it as I was taking over breast cancer. I was going to empower myself with positive attitude and a positive spirit to take it on by, you know, take the bull by its reins. And during that chemotherapy journey, I learned that I carry the BRCA1 gene mutation. So I always tell people, know your family history. I didn't know that I would have been the 14th Levingston to have been diagnosed with breast cancer on my dad's side of the family. Wow. Right. So that, I mean, so just, okay. Diagnosed, um, relocating to Houston. Then you learn about your family history. All this is happening within a matter of weeks. Okay. Um, what, what, for, what, 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 for some people it could have, you know, you could learn all this information over a few years. This is happening in a matter of weeks. And let me rewind Reverend Carter. I've got to mention that before I even started chemotherapy, because I desire to become a mother, I had to go through the IVF egg retrieval process. So it was like, inject yourself with hormones, get some eggs out, get a port placed, start chemo. And this was happening within, I mean, day after day, it was a procedure. Then I boarded that train. Well, actually, I boarded the train when I started that process. Then it was fast moving. 15 rounds of chemotherapy later, rang the bell December 30th, 2019, which was symbolic because I'm I'm really ringing. I rang out chemotherapy. I was ringing out that phase of the journey as I was entering 2020. So that was a symbolic, victorious moment for me. Then we entered 2020. Well, my journey wasn't over. I had to undergo a bilateral mastectomy to reduce my risk of recurrence of breast cancer because of that BRCA1 gene mutation. So that was a major surgery. And then I had breast reconstruction months later. And then I had another procedure, a uh, preventative procedure to reduce my risk of ovarian cancer. And while I say that was my, my journey, it's still, when you're surviving, this is really when it starts because now I'm focused on survive her ship. Woo. Wow. 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 Oh my goodness. I, I am, you are amazing testimony. I mean, that that's you, 
you have gone through more in a 24 month period than anyone would even think or wish and prayerfully would not have to go through in a lifetime. Exactly. And and yet you are strong and you are encouraging so many others and you decided to turn your pain into, into purpose. purpose. That's right. And um I I I'm I'm just I'm just speechless as I'm sitting here listening um to your to your story. Wow. Lindsay, it's 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 listen, please, please y'all put comments in the box to give her some encouragement. We are so excited. Um you you don't mess me up. But I'm I got my little script here now. I'm like, Lord have mercy, Lindsay done let mess me up. But Lindsay, I wanna I wanna you you touched on it, but if you don't mind speak more to the fact to our sisters and to women or however you want to do it on mm -hmm. the importance of checking yourself mm -hmm. and respecting what you find like so for example mm -hmm. you said this was your your first mammogram right um speak can you speak more to that if you're speaking to the sister like what's why is it important to check yourself and respect what you what you find I like how you worded that reverency, respect what you find when you, so we, you know, we haven't lived, you born and raised in New York and I lived in New York about a decade. NYPD says, if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. If you feel something that's abnormal in your body, schedule an appointment to meet your doctor. Don't mm -hmm. wait. Early detection saved my life. Had I not taken action when I felt the lump in my right breast, I may not be sitting here today. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we respect our what we whatever is happening in our bodies that we take action, immediate action. Exactly. Because my because of my early detection, I was uh, diagnosed with stage two B. So I had a positive prognosis. It was treatable, but had I waited, had I prolonged making that appointment, it could have developed to stage four, it could have ended my life. So sisters, brothers too, because breast cancer can affect men. Mm -hmm. It is important that you take action. There is this stigma in our community. I don't know why, but for some reason, black people are afraid to go to the doctor because we don't want to hear that. I'm sorry, you have X, Y, Z news. They don't want to hear, we don't want to hear this news. And so we're fearful, therefore we prolong and we procrastinate making that appointment. But I'm mm -hmm. here to tell you, early detection will save your life. So if you feel something, ladies, that's abnormal in your breast, it could be a cyst, it could be, it could be something other than a cancerous mass, but get it checked out. Yes. There's power in information, there's power in knowing. So the more information you have, the more you can take action and, and make a plan, uh, you know, uh, sit down with your doctor so that you can determine a, a plan of treatment, a plan of action. And I also want to address healthcare and access. There are resources to support underinsured, underserved, or low income yes. women and men and families. So don't uh, allow don't let allow finances to keep you from going to see the doctor as well. Okay, and also do me a favor, Lindsay, if you can, because I think that's very important. Send me a, um, a link, uh, a list of uh, websites that that women who are under finance or mm -hmm. um, can go to. Because you know, uh, talk a little more about how. So, which leads to my next question: If someone has breast cancer, is there such thing as? And be honest. Is there such thing as the right hospital? Um, and and so because if someone has breast cancer and they are under finance or don't have proper insurance, are there chances of survival as seeable as someone who is fully insured? Mm, that's a really good question. And I want to preface this by saying, 
I am not a health professional, nor am I an insurance professional. I can only speak to my personal experience, but I will say that when I was first diagnosed, I had insurance that was like a healthcare plan and its coverage was minimal. It was minimal. Um, and so we had to pray and pray and I was able to um, get, you know, get proper insurance, I guess you could say commercial insurance that would cover and support chemotherapy treatments, et cetera. Um, again, I, what I will say, there are resources. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really just takes, a, uh, it just takes some research and going to the right doctor or clinic or reaching out to a nonprofit that can support, but there are resources to help women. Um, to help women get the services they need, the mammography services and the treatment. So through Survive Her, I partner with a nonprofit called Afro Pink. It's based in Brooklyn. And we raise money for our MAMO grant fund um, to support women. Uh, here in Texas, mammograms out of pocket would cost of anywhere from 250 to $300. So our goal is to try to support women and raise you know, to support a few women a month to get mammograms. But to answer your question, Reverend C, there are resources. And okay. I can't pinpoint good hospitals or those hospitals that will turn women away. Mm -hmm. Preferably they won't. Um, because if there's women who need life-saving treatment, there are, there are options for them. Okay. And for those of you who constantly see her information um, uh, tra trampling across the bottom of the screen, make sure you you know email her or ig follow her um and and this is this is real if you have a, a question don't be afraid to dm um someone i always tell people in my in my in our ministry lindsay they always ask me pastor why when it comes to uh speaking to certain people you don't speak to them but you put them in contact with someone so if i'm speak if i'm trying to help a young kid from going to prison i go find someone who was in prison if I'm trying to help someone, you know, you know, whatever, you know, go to college. I find a student who is in college. And reason being is because I believe that someone who understands the situation can uh, is best at giving the information. And uh, likewise, y'all need to listen to what she is saying about uh, respecting what you find. A lot of people, one of the saddest realities that we say specifically in the religious and the church community, when someone uh, ceases to live, is the quickest way we become irresponsible about it is that we say it was their time, mm. and uh, we 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 euphemize it and we try to make it sound good, when in fact it may have been their irresponsibility. Mm. Um, but wow. we don't we, ne we never talk about that. You know, so, you know, like how you said, you said you took immediate action, you know. I um, took action because I wanted to live. We have those choices. Exactly. We but a choice. But a lot of times in the religious communities, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't, we're not honest. Mm. We, we just simply say God loved them best. Yeah, mm. God loved them, but he wasn't planning on seeing them so soon. If there would have been a little more, and I say that with all respect to anyone who has lost a loved one, what I'm saying is we have to be more responsible for our actions, just as you took you took action. And I say that to everyone who was here. I was in the hospital one time. I was home. I felt um, pain. There's some people who can remember. I felt uh, pain in my intestine, and I, one side of my mind was like, wait till the next morning, and then the other side of my mind was get your behind up and go to that hospital. <laughs> yes. And um, I got up and went to the hospital. And next thing you know, they admitted me. And the doctor specifically said, throwing tubes down my nose. And the doctor specifically said, you better be glad you came tonight. Because if you didn't come tonight, your intestines would have burst. Wow. And you would have, you would have, you wouldn't have been able to do anything because you would have been in pain. And you would have died from toxic. Toxic, mm -hmm. toxic in your body. So my point is, I could have said, you know what, God is able. I'm gonna go to sleep, and He's gonna heal me in the morning. <laughs> and right. he would, I would have been looking at Him in the morning, you know. So right. um, we we want we definitely want to respect our health. And as she says, you want to take action on that. Now, 
let me ask you another question. Um, before your diag, no, before your no, you, you answered. You said it wasn't. That you said it wasn't. Um, it was not. Uh, you didn't get it all the time. This was your first one. Now, the day you were diagnosed, mm. how was it for you emotionally, psychologically, mentally, and spiritually? Give me real talk. Give me real talk. Real talk. Well, yes. shock. Uh, I'll never forget. I was in the bathroom, and. Uh, I, so the radiologist who performed the biopsy left a voicemail on my phone um, and I had to call him back. We were playing phone tag because I was doing something at the time and I called him back and I'll never forget. He was very nonchalant about it. He said, I'm sorry, Lindsay, it's breast cancer. And I'm like, okay. You know, didn't expect to hear those words. And I said, okay. And so I, I just immediately start asking questions. I said, okay, so what do I do next? You know, what's going to happen? I I just really went into sh pure shock. And so he said, you need to meet with your ob Jen. She'll talk to you about your options. I said, okay. So uh, now mind you, my, appoint my ob Jen was very respectful in that she called me and said, can you come into the office? I'd like to talk to you. So she didn't know that I already received the news via my radiologist. So by the time I, so I, this was on a Friday, by the way. So here we go, entering the weekend with this diagnosis and this news, and I'm supposed to, you know, just keep it moving. So the weekend was hard. And then Monday met with her and we sat down and I had my mom on a computer on my iPad on, on Skype, on Zoom. I think it was mm -hmm. Skype. We Skyped her in so that she could listen and kind of be the voice of reason to help me process as I'm receiving this information. Another thing too that I want to point out is when you receive a diagnosis, not only are you in shock and trying to process, but um, you also receive a lot of information, information overload. And I have a journal, it must be on my nightstand, a journal, because I was taking so many notes for every, from every doctor's appointment and it was just overwhelming. So it's very helpful and it's such a blessing to have my mom as part of these meetings and these appointments. So we were talking and my mom said, would Lindsay be able to come home? Does it, I'm in New York at the time. Mm -hmm. And so she said, Is, would Lindsay be able to come home for treatment? Can she seek treatment anywhere? And so I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, just whatever I need to do. I'm just nodding in shock. Mm -hmm. And did I cry a few times? Yes. But let me tell you when it really hit me, Reverend Carter. So came home to Houston on a one-way flight. Didn't know how long I'd be here. I just knew I needed to meet with the breast surgeon and figure mm -hmm. something out. And after that meeting, after the egg retrieval process, I took a tour of the chemo suite at Texas Oncology because I was treated through Texas Oncology. Most people assumed I was treated at MD Anderson, which is you know the top cancer treatment center here in, in mm -hmm. the Texas Medical Center. But I was treated at Texas Oncology. And they gave me a tour of the chemo suite and that's when it hit me and, and i just started bawling because yeah. that's that's when it became so real that here i am at age at the time 37 was going to be injected and pumped with all of this medication yeah. and these drugs and and all i knew is i would be sickly lose my hair you know what you what you assume and what you see based on you know other people's experiences but what god wanted to tell me at the time is this is not going to be you, Lindsay. You're going to be a survivor. You're going to get through this. I just need to, I need you to trust me to power you through this, these 15 rounds. Just trust me through this. And we're going to get to the other side. So I just leaned on him even more. I trusted him and I believed that he would heal me. But emotionally, I'm, I was still processing every doctor's appointment. I know I cried in the car with my mom after each appointment because it was just so much information, so much terminology. So, oh, my goodness. And it got to the point where during my appointments, they would bring in a scribe to take notes for my doctor, for my doctor's sake and for my sake so that I could we could keep up. There was just so much information. It was a whirlwind, a whirlwind. Wow, wow. Um wow, it's 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 you know, as you said, here you are, you know, most people when they get a tour of a facility, it's 
it's excitement because you're touring a hotel, you're touring a resort, you're touring. Uh, well, yeah, this was the, the cancer resort, okay? Exactly, and here you are. You 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 you're touring something that you don't want to be in, and 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 you hear God saying, "I got you," and yet at the same time, and this is what people need to understand that. You can be faithful to God and still live with fears. Um, because as a matter of fact, someone said it best, if you were never fearful, you wouldn't have to be faithful. Mm. Um, uh, uh, fear is what the, the commands faith. Because when you're scared, you got to lean not to your own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge um, Pam, you you are sharing so much, but another blessing, and all of that is amazing. Is that God knew what you needed, so He says, "I'm gonna be by your side." But not only am I gonna be by your side, I'm gonna be by your side um, through the physical presence of your mother, Miss um, Abby. Are you there? Yes. Yeah, so he says, this like God says, I'm gonna be by your side, but not only am I gonna be by your side, but I'm gonna be by your side through the physical presence of your mother who is going to walk with you through everything. And then not only she's gonna be there um, with you while you're going through, I'm gonna make sure she's there with you uh, when you come out. And that's a blessing. He knew the strength that you um, needed. And I'm, I'm, Listen, I'm I'm doing this. Don't put me in tears, all right? I'm trying You're to stay. You're gonna make me start crying. I'm because trying. Every I'm time trying to I think about, really strong. every time I think about, and I see that picture, and I know that my mom, uh, such a strong tower, but God was using her to keep me propped up, to keep me um, focused on Him at all times. We pray daily, and we still do. But when I tell you there's nothing like a mother's love, and she demonstrated unconditional love from day one, that is a blessing. That is a blessing. And he also used uh, my, my family, my aunt, Angie, who was my cheerleader through it all. He used the deacons at Brentwood. He used Alpha Kappa Alpha women. He really used all of these people as vessels. Um, these people in my village as vessels to help to keep me lifted through it all. And I don't know that I could have powered through it had I not had that village of support. Support is so important. So if you know someone who's been diagnosed, man or man or woman, support them, show up for them, pray for them, because it makes a huge difference in their in their mental capacity. It helps them physically, it helps them emotionally, and it helps them spiritually. Exactly. And the word of God teaches us to strengthen one another, to encourage one another. And that's why one of the problems with our world now is that, especially this generation, and I love this generation, but one of the problems with this generation is that they have been conditioned to be so independent. And as a consequence, mm -hmm. when they need help, they have not built networks um, and they have not built relationships. And I, I come, I, I speak to anyone who's watching, especially a millennial, the millennials. I'm not saying you have to have a million friends. I'm not saying you have to speak to people every day. Like, do, but what we are saying here today is, it's important to build relationships because there may be a time where you're going to need them or there may be a time where you can be a blessing to someone. So take note in the importance of relationships. But another thing I want to, I want to say before I move on, I want to give a shout out, you know, to Miss Ivy. Um, I want to give a shout out to Miss Ivy because a lot of times, and this is no, this is not making your situation light in any way but a lot of time the interview is all on Lindsay and the magazines are all on Lindsay 
and the news reporters are all on Lindsay and the doctors are all talking about Lindsay. And we thank God for that. But I would argue that it was probably, and you may disagree with me, but I will argue that it was probably more painful for Ivy, Miss Ivy, to watch her daughter go through surgery after surgery. Her only child. An only child. And you know, although you may have cried in the hospital, you don't know how many times your mother has cried privately mm -hmm. so that she can dry her face to get to the hospital to be strong for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, you are the bomb, Lindsay, but hey, I got to give a shout out to Ivy. Miss Ivy, you are, deserves, you, you are the bomb. She deserves, she deserves uh, all of the accolades because uh, just as you mentioned, just as much as there is focus on me, the survivor, the co-survivors are just as important. Yep. They're just as important because they need the strength, the mental capacity, the physical capacity to serve as a caretaker and to stand strong in moments in which we may be weak. Yep. And so my mom, what a blessing she was throughout that process and still is to that day but taking care of her only child and making sure that I had everything I needed and never had to wince or uh, just need anything. I was well taken care of and she made sure that I was comfortable through it all, that I was positive and happy and well fed, <laughs> everything. And so I just thank her. And, and I'll mention this too. So uh, I don't know if I think I shared this with you, Reverend Carter, but Channel 11 here in Houston just did a, a wonderful piece about my story yeah. and included mom in that piece. And I always try yeah. to make a point to include her in any interview because she is part of my story. Mm -hmm. um, I made sure I wrote about her in my essence.com article. And whenever I get an opportunity, I want to highlight it and, and um, salute my mother, my co-survivor. Well, this is awesome. This is amazing. Um, you're sharing so much that a lot of people don't know um, just about going through um, this this journey. Now, let me ask you this. Life for you as a, uh, as a journalist was in the fast lane and you were doing your thing, you know, taking over New York. Um, you. You're just really, really doing it. I just be like, yeah, I know her. I know her. I know her. <laughs> All right. uh, but but let me ask you this. You You were journalist, interviewer, anchor. And so you were on one side of the mic and now life has put you on the other side of the mic. Right, I, be, I was so used to interviewing talent and I became the talent. Exactly, so t tell us about that when, when, when the tables have now turned. It's been really interesting uh, to be the, on this side of the microphone, if you will. But what I've learned in all of my interviewing as an interviewer, is I was all, I always gravitated to, to people who were genuine and authentic. And I realized that just telling my story as it is attracted media and was most impactful as, it, as I was resonating and attracting audiences and connecting with audiences. But it's been really fun to be on this side of the table, but fun in a good way because I know I'm making an impact even more so than I was as a reporter, as an anchor. And I, and I realized when I created the Survive Her brand that this was my God-given purpose, to, to use the microphone in an, a powerful way that would change lives, that would help others. Mm -hmm. Wow, and it's, it's, it's interesting you say, you, you learn because one of the things that help people is authenticity. And because people can't relate to what we prepare for, mm -hmm. they can relate to our authenticity. So, you know, um, people don't relate to if you know, you know, we have all this education and we say stuff like, you know, I was financially destitute and I was, you know, trampling along the terrain of life. They sitting there like, what? The? But they can relate to I was broke and struggling and didn't know how I was gonna make it. Exactly. And life, 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 life has a way of of knocking you so low so that on your way up you can help others up 
Mm. You know, um, sometimes I, I'll, I'll never forget this. Someone asked someone, why did God knock me down? Mm. And, I, you know, I, going through this, this, sometimes God allow us to go through places so that he can get the glory, but so we can see things from a whole nother perspective. So let me ask you this. What are some things that you thought were priority in life that, that were important to you prior to this? <laughs> and <laughs> now you realize your priorities have changed. Oh, significantly. When you are diagnosed, excuse me, I have to told you I was gonna <coughs> You're right. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. you. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Allergies. Okay. Uh, before I was diagnosed, career was number one. I had not thought of, I really wasn't thinking about nor prioritizing motherhood. Um, family was, of course, always top in my life, but it was just career. I mean, in New York City, it's, you know, everyone is career driven. But I, I say this, that um, breast cancer was a blessing. The breast cancer diagnosis was a blessing. I know that may sound weird, but let mm -hmm. me tell you why or how it was a blessing. It allowed me to stop moving so fast. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to relocate back home to Houston and take a deep breath because I'd been moving quickly for almost a 10 years in New York City. You never get a moment to just rest. Um, it allowed me to prioritize motherhood. I had to put that on the front burner now and get some, you know, get some eggs out before I could start chemotherapy. It allowed me to rethink media and my career in media and how I wanted to serve others through that microphone. Hmm. Um, I mean, so many blessings, so many blessings. It also allowed me to reevaluate some relationships hmm. in my life and either continue relationships or not continue relationships that were not serving me. Mm -hmm. So it, it really, the diagnosis was such a blessing in so many ways. It helped me to refocus on my health. Now, prior to diagnosis, I was very active. I worked out. I'm a pescatarian. I always watch what I eat. So that I was, I was healthy, which also contributed to my positive prognosis. But um, perspective completely changes. And now I, I, I don't have time for games, for mess, for... Um, negative energy. You just live differently. I'm living life to its fullest now. I'm living bigger. I, I'm living with what I know for sure is part with purpose. Wow, that that's amazing. So it's 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 like wow, Lizzie, you are you are saying so much because um, I will say this is one of the first interviews where I'm ever you know getting speechless, and you know I'm not speechless. I you know, know you're not. You know, you know me, you know, the, the favorite son of Brentwood Baptist Church. Oh, we, Lord. I mean, come on, we all know that. I mean, let's not, let, let's, and anyone from Brentwood who is viewing, they know that as well, you know. Uh, but, 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 and if Joseph Ford is looking, Joseph, I, I'm sorry to let you know, that's just a fact. All right. Um, but, 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 you said something that's so important. You said that, um, you don't have time for nonsense, all that stuff now, because although you have heard all your life, you heard from the preachers, you may have even heard from me saying the pulpit, tomorrow is not promise. And that's true. And now you've gotten to the point where you like, you actually, it's, when you say it, it's no longer just a quote for you. No, it's real. It's, it's real for you. It's real. So now you cherish, you cherish, um each each moment and to hear you say to say this and you also talk about the blessing of positive energy but you said something else that i think we need to listen to y'all um including myself you said because i ate properly mm -hmm. that that played a role in my positive diagnosis talk more about that so yes yeah, so because i was healthy prior to diagnosis meaning um, I was in good shape. I was active. I exercised at least three to four times a week. And I was very mindful about what I was eating and how I was eating and my lifestyle. So my breast surgeon told me that that contributed to 
my positive prognosis in addition to the early detection because that's important too and had it not been for that BRCA1 gene mutation and my DNA not lining up, that breast cancer diagnosis would not have happened. But my, my doctor said I was born with it. So at some point in my life, I would have been diagnosed, which was really interesting. Wow. Like, wow, at some point I would have been diagnosed. It just so happened that I felt the lump in 2019 and I did something about it. But at some point, had I waited and not taken action, it could have progressed. So yes, let's eat healthy. Let's be mindful of what we're eating. Uh, let's watch our meat intake, dairy intake. Um, you know, in the black community, we love soul food, but it's high in sodium. Let's monitor diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, all of those uh, diseases that can affect, uh, likely affect a, a cancer diagnosis. Wow. So, so you just messed up again. So you were, all right, so, <laughs> so breast cancer is not something that comes up. You were born with it? Right, because it was in my DNA. I was born with this gene mutation. So that means that at some point in my life, I would have been diagnosed. I, what that gene mutation really means is I, have a, I had a very high risk of being diagnosed with breast or ovarian cancer. Wow. And so this is important. No. Like Lady Gaga song. I was born this way. Wow. And th this is important to know that we need to we need to pay attention, y'all, to our eating habits. Um, because you know, uh health and survival is is it's not just it's a hundred percent God, but it's also our responsibility as well. Um, because God gave us bodies and we have to uh, honor our temples. It, it functions accordingly. I, someone asked me, someone said, you know, God can do anything. I say, I say, he sure can. But if you jump off the building, the likelihood of him stopping you before you hit the ground is very slim. Wow. Um, because he gives, he gives free will. And so although God uh, can turn our situations around, uh, someone said it best said, let's try not to make him work so hard. Mm. You know, um, let's try not to let make them work so hard that we need to become mindful of what we're eating our intake uh, because uh the less the less clogged arteries and the less you know it's it's, it's it gives it, it allows the body to respond and to recover that's um, another thing and i'm glad you mentioned that reverend c so because i was in good shape prior to diagnosis i was able to a power through 15 rounds of chemotherapy. Not once was I sick. I mm -hmm. maintained a, a good uh, diet. I ate. I didn't lose weight. I gained a little bit, actually, just from the medication. Uh, number two, I was able to recover successfully from a bilateral mastectomy. That is a major surgery. I was able to recover quickly from breast reconstruction. These are major surgeries in which my body is experiencing physical trauma. So yes, it does, it, do, it does, excuse me, it's important that your body's in shape at all times. So this picture, this was before my egg retrieval surgery. Okay. But because I was in good shape, I was able to ch 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 recover, power through and, and this bounce was. back. This was when my hair started to grow back. So this was after my hair started to grow back in January. So I rang the bell in December and about a month after I st it started to sprout back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then your hair is all the way back now. It is. And this was before, I think this was right after, um, right after uh, or before my breast implant surgery. Mm -hmm. okay. So that was okay. in July. So it had grown back. I mean, it was a fro. Mm -hmm. And the challenge <laughs> of just, just your strength and getting, getting, getting through it how you know god god strengthens you through this in, this entire process now let me ask you this romans 8 and 28 says all things work together for the good of those who love the lord according when you look back over your life is there is there any way that you can now see how the painful things that you have been through regardless of what they were prepared you to deal with this health battle yes Yes, he was equipping me and strengthening me 
through every facet of my life in which I experienced a challenge. I mean, those were nothing compared to the breast cancer challenge, if you will. But mm -hmm. I understand that he was aligning everything. He aligned the doctors. He aligned the insurance. He aligned my village. Everything was lined up. And I'm telling you, this it was such a blessing to go through everything and not have to worry about a thing. I was well taken care of, uh, you know, insurance wise, financial. I didn't have to worry about anything. Food. He provided all of my needs. He provided everything I needed to overcome my breast cancer diagnosis. Wow. God is, God is able, everything that we have, everything that we have been through. Now, during this time, uh, Lindsay, I saw a video I was trying to upload. I couldn't upload it. But during this time, you in the hospital <laughs> and you up here doing I video was, blogs. I was trying to vlog. You know, I mean, y'all, she's up in the hospital <laughs> With the doctors, and she's doing video blogs talking about, hey, y'all, I want y'all to see Listen. my doctor for the day. She asking, her, now, what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Go to her page. Check it out if you can. She up there interviewing the doctor. Yeah, you know, all right. And I know the doctor like, this girl is crazy right here. Now, uh, uh, tell me <laughs> what, I mean, encourage someone. Tell someone, someone is going through something right now, seriously. And they need to know, Lindsay. How do I get your positive spirit in a negative situation? So the, the former, the reporter and anchor in me wanted to capture everything on video as much as I could. But Joel Osteen said it best. He said, you're not sick getting well. You're well battling sickness. Mm -hmm. And that quote resonated with me because I said, I'm still going to be Lindsay. I just happened to be Lindsay with breast cancer, but I'm still going to be me and I'm going to show up as Lindsay as much as I can. Uh, and I actually, I enjoyed going to chemo after, you know, the first two and I got used to it. I love seeing the nurses. I loved seeing my doctors. And then I had withdrawals when I stopped going for treatment. I, I showed up as my best self with a smile on my face because that was, that was what I knew. That mm -hmm. was still me. I still maintained as much of Lindsay as I could. Exactly. And you have to maintain as much of you as you can. But a pot, ninety percent of it is showing up and showing up with a positive attitude. So or you can go the other route reason. and just say, "Woe is me! I'm going to die." No, not over here. I wasn't. But wow. I was still going to be Lindsay Joy. My middle name is Joy. Lindsay Joy Levingston. I was going to wake up and 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 be joyful because God allowed me. He he, you know he he chooses his strongest soldiers. For battle, mm -hmm. and so I had to honor that. Wow! So, so I'm I'm one of your strong soldiers, but you gotta you gotta walk with me through this, and he did. But I just showed up. Most of the, I would say about 96 percent of the days I was like, and then of course now let's keep it real. There were some days I didn't want to get out of bed, but mm -hmm. I made an effort to at least go for a walk even if it meant walking to the kitchen and back on the days when I was fatigued. And then some days I went to Zumba during chemo. So I just said, I got to keep going. If I didn't feel sick, I was, I would get up and do what I needed to do. Wow. 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 Power through and just maintain as much of you as you can and don't let it take over your life, but you take over, you take over the cancer wow. the diagnosis. Wow. So how did you get to, cause sometimes people go through chemo, what would you say to someone, to a sister, a mother, a young woman, an older woman, a man, whatever, but what would you say to someone who, like you went from uh, ch ch hair, ch hair challenge, losing your hair, but you decide I'm gonna turn it and I'm a, I'm a rocket, I'm mm. a rocket. Like, although it's like, I'm gonna make it look, I'm, I'm a rock this thing. Boom. How, how, <laughs> How do how did you take what would you tell someone who may be physically dealing with cancer, but also psychologically dealing with insecurities? Mm. Well, you know, you have to remember that hair grows back, lashes grow back, eyebrows grow back. It's only temporary. It's only temporary. And my mom kept reminding me of that, that it's only temporary. 
And it may seem like it is a, a forever journey, but it's temporary. If I And I'm like, today, this is 2021. If I rewound back like, wow, that was that long ago. I didn't, at the time, I couldn't see this far ahead, meaning it was just kind of in a bubble, just trying to get through it. But I look back and I was like, I went through all of that. Wow. But it's only temporary. You're going to yeah. get through it. You're going to get through it. And makes, you know, I would also... Uh, maybe make a list of some I, some things you want to do to celebrate your victory, whether it's mm -hmm. taking a trip or going for you know a nice meal, treating yourself to dinner, whatever it is. You know, make a list of things you want to experience when you're done with your treatment or your surgeries. Something to look forward to, something that you may want may have wanted to do years ago that you've never done, you know, like maybe a bucket list, but. Make some make a list of things that you want to experience, something that you could do to celebrate your victory, because that helped too. Wow, wow. There, there are people when all this is over and when COVID's over, and that's what I did. You know, I took a trip and that was exciting. And you just celebrate every day. You celebrate every day and you do your best to um to to help others. Because now on this side of it, I'm so excited through Survive Her. My goal is to inform and inspire and empower women around breast cancer awareness beyond the month of October. And I do, you know, I have a podcast and I host events and I raise money to support women. And so now I'm just so excited to do this work, more excited than I was working in TV news. Like this is when I knew that this was my assignment. He was pre pre preparing me all of this time for this work. The, wow. the, the media jobs that I've had, he prepared, he was preparing me all this time to create my own brand through which wow. I can connect with audiences, not through a CNN or not through a network, but through my own work. But it just so happens that these media outlets are calling me to share my story. It's just so interesting how he works. Wow. So wow. While I could have worked for CNN, CNN or Pixie 11 or New York one, they're calling me to share my story. I'm like, wow, God, okay. I see how you're working now. I see how you're working. He's so faithful and he's able. He is able. Yes. I'm not, not only is he able, but he's also willing. That's uh, right. Um, um, so uh, to encourage. Surround yourself with positive energy, positive people, a tribe. Reverend C say, you don't have to have a million friends, but at least establish a tribe of at least a handful of people who you can yep. call on and people who can call on you. Yep. That is that, that you're, you're, you're preaching up in here uh, <laughs> because, because this is, this is so, so powerful. A lot of people, um, um, uh, have, have passed away, not because they were dying, but they passed away because they weren't living. Mm, and wow. a, a, a lot of times we we have to live our way through what seems like dead situations. Mm. And I, I think it's it's so important to have um the right surrounding on the outside and definitely on the inside. I, you, you you're talking about so much and you're blessing so many people with your words and your story, and it's so funny. Because what people need to understand, the only reason you had a test, the only reason you or any of us have testimonies is because we've had some tests. That's right. And, and you said, God chose me. If you are going through something, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who's watching, but I want to let you know, if you are going through something, it's not about you being attacked by the enemy. It may be you've been selected by God. Yes. And how you handle what you're going through. So someone said, God doesn't put you in stuff to show people how you act when you get in. Mm. Sometimes God puts you in, allows you to go through something so you can show others how to come out. That's right. And and uh, I want to encourage people who are watching, follow me. Um, all the information is below. Tell us more about Survive Her, because you you came out and you started Survive Her, and talk yeah. more about the name. You 
it, it could have been Survivor, you know, and you said survive her. Now, we're not going to talk about why you left him out. You know, you just left us out of here. But t- tell us more. Tell us more about that. Tell us more about oh Survive goodness. Her. All so right? it was originally. Like, we, we'll figure it out, brother. brothers. We're going to figure it out. But tell us more about Survive Her. All right. <laughs> so initially, originally, the brand was Sir Thrive Her because I survived breast cancer mm-hmm. and I am now yeah. thriving. But I had to rebrand, um, rebrand my name to Survive Her. And the the emphasis is really focusing on women's survival. And the the term, the brand name resonates with not only breast cancer survive hers, but it resonates with all women because we have Mm -hmm. survived something in our lives, whether it was a financial challenge, a health challenge, a relationship challenge. We -hmm. have survived something in our lives and we are now thriving. Mm -hmm. So the concept really is just about empowering women to know that you can survive, you can overcome whatever challenge you're experiencing. And mm-hmm. I'm kind of like the, the poster child of that. Look at me now. I don't look like what I've been through. And wow. you, whoever's watching, you don't have to look like what you are going through or what you've been through. Wow, that's a blessing. And and I, I, and I'm joking with you about the survive. But it's, this is very, um, very important that that you, you, you allow yourself to come um, through things. And you talk about always make sure you're positive. My fiance has the same uh, reality. She's like, just keep positive energy um, because it's important that you, that people need to understand how you stay positive uh, can determine um, what the Bible says when it says, as a man thinketh, so is he or she. Mm -hmm. And so your reality comes from your thinking. That's why the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so that we have to constantly renew our minds because so many things are put in our minds that that informs us that life is over when, in fact, life may just be beginning. And for you, it's beginning in so many ways because now you're encouraging others and people are being blessed. People are even putting comments up. I'm looking at them as they're going on. Um, One person just said you're empowering women to live beyond life limitations. Mm. And um that that is so important because you know people sometimes the bible says we are won by testimonies so sometimes it's your story lindsay that's going to touch more lives than you will ever know mm. more that's people a it's a blessing to be a blessing it's more blessing people will get blessing. through something mm-hmm. never meet you gives i heard i read something from this lady named Lindsay Levinston, and it encouraged me, and you would never meet them. But God is using your story to help someone get through. Diane Adams said, "There's power in knowing, mm-hmm. you know, um, that 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 you that, that 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 information can lead to transformation." Now, I'm a pastor, so I have to ask you: Was there a particular scripture? Uh, that that kept you while going through this. Yes, your my, well, my favorite scripture. It's in my bio on Facebook, on Instagram. It's Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Yes, he has an amazing plan for me, and I know that. And that's uh, that's my favorite scripture that I lean on because all this time when I may have questioned him, I realized that his plan it was not about my plan or or my goals. It's about what he wants for my life. And it's a plan to see me shine, not to harm me. And so I resonate, that resonated with me a lot through my journey. It still does. It's my go-to scripture because I believe it and I I lived it. I am living it and I see his faithfulness in everything that he's prepared me for to date. Wow. Now, now, so now you do know I'm I'm about to shout you since you said that's your favorite scripture. Now, do you you do know the reason why he said that to them, right? No, what? For the for I know the plans I have for you, plans for you to prosper. No, preach to me. Teach you, 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 me. You, you, so a lot of times people quote that and 
they, they quote that phrase and it sounds good. But the reason why God said it is they were about to face some battles. Mm -hmm. Wow. And God wanted to encourage them prior to let them know, I know what you're about to go through, but I want to let you know the plans that I have for you. So what you're about to face is still not going to interrupt the plans mm. that I have. For you. So I'm putting this in your how in your head, in your heart now. So when you face your battles, you can remember the plans that I have for you. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it was like, uh, it, it was like, you're about to go through, but I want to give you some words of encouragement. So all along, you've been reading that. And God says, I want you to remember, you don't know what you're about to go through, but I know the plans I have for you. Wow. Oh, you've been posting it. You've been whatever, not even knowing. Mm. But he was preparing me for battle. Come on. Wow. That's a word. Preparing, preparing you, preparing you for battle. Well, it's 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 we have reached that eleven o'clock hour. All that I have. To what that hour went by fast when you're it talking went, about something good. Listen, I'm telling you when <laughs> when when you hear life transformation, um, and it's 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 so authentic, and it's so organic that um, it, it it changes people's uh, lives. I have to ask this other question. When you when you look back over your life, Lindsay, you don't experience it all. Um, you know, traveled the world, sat in front of greats, been to top restaurants and all that other stuff, <laughs> and traveled and interview people, and all that was before. How would you say? Would would you still say that? In your opinion, my latter is going to be better than my great, my, my former. Mm. I don't. That, that you're to come. What's coming is better. Like when you look at everything you went through, what you say now, now that I know the reality of life, mm -hmm. everything is so much better than the past. Oh, it's so much better. It's so much better. And I rewind and I say, well, I was going through that or I did that or this was happening. And I'm like, this is this, this is this is life right now. It just has so much more meaning and so much purpose. I'm able to connect with women and help save their lives in some in some capacity, or at least have some um, uh, support. You know, God is using me as a vessel to support them. And so I'm like, this is this is living. This is it. Um, but everything that has happened in the past certainly prepared me for the battle. But now this is this is greater than anything I could have ever imagined. I'm happier. Yeah. I'm at peace. I'm fulfilled in so many ways, emotionally and spiritually and mentally. It, this is this is like icing on the cake in everything that has happened to me. Wow. Lindsay, we are just so excited that that you took the time to join us today. We, we're going to have to do a part two to this. Um, are there any words, Lindsay, that you want to share with the viewers before before you, you know, are there any words from Lindsay that, that you like, listen, y'all don't get a chance to see me on an interview to, uh, again because I'm traveling the world or whatever, <laughs> you know, what's something that you want them to hear from Lindsay? Well, Part of my 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 uh, sermonette is a few. There's a few things. One is to encourage women, forty and up, or if you're under the age of forty and you have a family history of cancer, to schedule your mammogram and really prioritize that. Don't put it off. Schedule that mammogram. Number two, this applies to everyone, men and women. Schedule a genetic test so that you know what you know you know what's happening in your body you know about your family history and if necessary you can take some preventative measures and number three my my last and final message is you will survive and everyone watching is a survive her all the women at least wow so <laughs> you're a survivor you, you, you will get through get whatever you're going through sister schedule a mammogram if you're 40 and over everyone 
make sure you get a genetic test um, and then uh, you will you will get through this. Wow, those are three powerful uh, principles uh, to live by. We again are so honored and happy to have had you join us today. I thank you um, for accepting it because when I asked you, you was like, of course, you're the favorite son of Brent. Well, of course I'll do it. And so I just want to well, say, now I say yeah. yes to you anyway because you're you're a you know you're a good friend and you support me and I appreciate you. And we 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 just never help me with some emojis, y'all. Put some love in the chat box. Let us thank Miss Levenstein for taking time out to join us, but more importantly for sharing her story, how her pain has now become her purpose. I want you to follow her. You can see all her updates. Uh, don't call me trying to ask me how to find her. All the information is below. Um, you can find it. You can follow her. You can see the impact she's making. As a matter of fact, before we transition, uh, let's share with them the tentative event that we have coming up at the church in September. It's still pending, but share with them the... the I'm so the, excited. The I sent you an email, by the way, <laughs> about that. So... Okay. Survive Her is partnering with Afropink. Afropink is a nonprofit breast cancer organization based in Brooklyn. And we are partnering to host a mammogram drive um, at Mount Ararat Sunday, September 19th. We're working on the time and more details. But we identified Project Renewal, which is a nonprofit in New York City that has a scan van. And this van travels around the city to different boroughs to facilitate mammograms in communities. And so the scan van will be parked at the church to conduct and facilitate mammograms for women. And so we're so excited about that. We'll also have a panel discussion and yes. some other exciting things happening. So save the date, September 19th. More to come. Yes, more to come. We're excited about that. Our leader, our director of ministry is already excited about that. She will probably reach out to you today. Okay, wonderful. We're excited. We thank you for coming. This is how we're going to go out. We're not going to go out like we normally do. We're going to go out like this, y'all. I want y'all to go out excited and realize and realize that you are survivor. All right, y'all. Listen, y'all. You are survivor. Come on, come on, come on. Go ahead. Listen. We love you. Thank you. Love we thank too, you thank for being you. a blessing to so many people. Goodbye, Facebook. See us on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>